In this video, I'm going to take you through the steps required to make an, inv an inventor model of the object shown in this sketch. And uh, the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to begin by drawing a rectangle for the base that's 0 0.625 by 0 0.88. Uh, I'm going to extrude that 3 inches wide. I'm going to add a chamfer that's 0 0.25 by 45 to each end. Uh, I'm going to make a work plane that's two inches in from this edge of the object and on that work plane I'm going to draw the profile for this top piece and then I'll extrude that 2.250 in this direction and finally I'll use the point center point option uh, to put two uh, points in here to locate two 0.875 diameter holes that I'll use the hole tool to make so I'm going to begin by clicking on New, and then next I'm going to double click on Standard IPT. I'm going to drag this over a little bit. You can see the origin point over here. I'm going to select the Rectangle tool. I'm going to snap right there. I'm going to move in this direction, and I'm going to type 6.25 tab point 88 and press Enter. And uh, I'm going to scroll out a little bit so we can see that, and I'm going to actually put it in a home view and I'm going to finish the sketch. I'm going to select Extrude, or I could have typed E, pressed Enter, and uh, right now all I need to do in here for the distance for the extrusion is type 3, because in the sketch I can see that that's how wide the base is. Alright, next I'm going to add the, the two chamfers at each end of this part. Uh, so what I want to do is go to the chamfer tool, and that's going to open up a, a dialog box, and uh, I have some options over here. One is, is if I have two equal distances for the chamfer, I can select this button. If I know a distance and an angle, I can select this button. And if I know two distances but they're not equal, I can choose this option. And looking at the sketch, I know that I have a distance and an angle, so I'm going to pick this, this button in the center here. And the first thing I want to do is type in what the distance is, and that's 0.25. And the angle is already showing me 45 degrees and so that's that's the angle I need so I don't need to do anything here if it were different I could type that in at this point. Next is I have to do uh, two things. I have to choose the face that I want the angle to be measured from and then as soon as I pick on that button and select a face it kicks me over into the edge and I just pick the edge and so relative to that face it puts a 45 degree angle that's 0.25 inches wide from from this end back to there. Now if I pick OK it's going to take me out of the chamfer command so what I want to do since I need two chamfers is to select the apply button and notice that it's dropped me right back into face so I'm going to pick on this face it goes over to the edge button I'm going to pick the edge and pick OK and that closes the chamfer command and now I have my uh, two chamfers on my part. Now while we're here let's go ahead and uh, pick on this and pick uh, new sketch and let's put those two point center points in. Uh, those point center points are actually located an inch and a half from the front edge and so that's the midpoint so I'm just going to go over there and park on the center point or the midpoint and then project across and pick a point here I'm going to stay in line with that. You can see a little dotted line and pick over here. And then I'll fine tune the location by dimensioning from this edge to the center of that piece and type 1.00 and press enter. And I'll dimension from this point center point to the edge over here and type 1.00 and press enter. And uh, then finish the sketch and go to the hole tool and this hole is a through hole so it's this uh, this radio button right here is for through hole uh, the termination is through all so if the distance it if it just had a distance that went you know uh, if I need to specify a distance I'd pick on this but through all is good and I just need to set the diameter of 0.875 and press enter and at that point what I'm going to do is set a work plane in that's two inches in from this edge out here. Alright, so what I do is I pick on plane and I select offset from plane. I pick the plane I want to offset from and I'm holding down with the pick button of the mouse and I'm going to push in the direction that I want to go in. And At this point I'm going to type minus 2 and press enter. 
Now I can pick the green check button there. I'm going to pick on that plane and then pick New Sketch. And I'm going to go back and set this to Home View again because I'm going to show you a trick. My sketch is going to be two inches in from this plane right here, but my sketching area is obscured a little bit by the front edge of this part. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a trick. I'm going to click on View and I'm going to pick the Slice Graphics option and you can see that what it does is just temporarily it removes the front edge of of that object so I'm, I can see the uh, work plane that I'm working on here and so I'm going to go back to my sketch tools I'm going to pick on that tab and I'm going to do another uh, little trick here I'm going to use project geometry and I'm going to select project geometry and I'm going to pick this top plane and what that does is it projects a line into my sketch that is actually going to represent the bottom edge of that uh, of that sketch I'm making all right, next I want to locate two circles uh, that are located 1.09 inches in from the back edge and up 1.38 from the bottom. And a quick way to do that would just be to draw a rectangle by snapping right there on that corner and typing 1.09 tab 1.38 and pressing enter. And so this corner right here of the rectangle I just drew is actually the center of those two circles. 1.38 up from the bottom, 1.09 in from the back. So I'm going to pick the circle tool. I'm going to snap right there. And I can actually just snap to the end point of that line right there. And there's my larger circle. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit on this guy so we can see it. And I'm still in the circle command. I'm going to pick right here. And for this circle, I'm going to type 1.25 for the diameter and press Enter. Next, I'm going to select the line command and snap to this endpoint right down here and then I'm going to move up on there and it's kind of hard to see but you can see that the tangency symbol same tangency symbol that's right up here is showing up when I get onto that just at the right point I'm going to pick right there and press escape so now I'm tangent from this point to that circle I'm going to pick the trim command and I'm going to go ahead and trim this out and trim this out uh, I can also trim this out now uh, let's look at the let's look at this thing straight on now. Kind of zoom in here, and uh, let's escape out of my trim command. Move some of this stuff out of the way if I can here. If I move some of these dimensions out of the way. All right. Now I need to cut a slot through here that's 0.25 inches wide that's centered on the center of this circle. So I'm going to use the rectangle command again, and I'm just going to start a rectangle. I'm going to start right in here and move up in this direction and I'm going to give it a width of 0.25 because that's how wide this is and I'm going to type then I'm going to press the tab button and I'm going to type 1.00 and press enter and the reason I use no press escape the reason I typed in 1.00 I just wanted to make sure that the top of my rectangle cleared the top of this circle because I need to trim this out right in here so uh, at this point I can use the trim command and oh wait there's one other thing I should do first I'm gonna pick on dimension and I'm gonna dimension from the center of the circle to the edge of right here so I want to establish that first as 0.125 and press enter alright so now I know my rectangle is actually centered uh, where it needs to be on this circle and now I can do the trim command I'm gonna just trim here and trim here and uh, pretty much that's all I need to do at this point. I'm going to go back to my home view and finish the sketch. Alright, I'm going to select the extrude tool. I'm going to pick here and of course I want to go in the opposite direction and I want to type 2.250 for my extrusion distance and you want to be careful here that you don't select this rectangle that you drew in there but you just select the pieces around that and pick OK. And at that point, my, my model is, uh, is finished.